Hello friends and welcome Hi. back. So we are joined today by Jody and her children, <laughs> oh, now to my gym. Oh yes, this ceremonial lighting of lighting tends to cleanse any bad energies that might have entered <laughs> since I sat in here. <laughs> yeah, we're cleansing all the, the bad energies okay. you do. It could happen to me. Can we please light this as well? Oh, is that a candle? Oh, yeah, it's... I nearly brought a candle actually. <laughs> is it a yellow again? Did you know it's safe to have a candle right next to animals and plants? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you've also got gin as well. Yeah, at least it's not the only food, it's an alcohol beverage. Yeah, Diane Cox popped in today. Hi, Diane. As we know, you'll be watching this and kindly gift, re gifted us a bottle of £250 Chinese alcohol, which is 52% of it's rather strong. Right. So we will be using yes, that to, to spike the, the drinks of our guests tomorrow at the Sweden Experience Christmas Drinks Party. But anyway, thank you for, for joining me on, on, on the chairs in this beautiful space that is a cost that we do not time. Okay. I'm a chronic overthinker, so this is your clothing, right? Okay, you already you have drinks, so let's go. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so now we're all ready, we're all psychologically prepared. I've, I've switched up the outfit today, so you know, um, I'm not going to unintentionally flash anyone. Because uh, that's the thing with this dress, it was originally, it's meant to be like an oversized blazer dress, but the length of it is slightly, it's, it's a bit too short, so I'm, I'm, I'm switching up the style. Oh, so it's just like a, it is like a blazer rather than a dress? No, it's meant to be a dress yeah. in the style of a blazer. Okay. I'm using it as a blazer now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's You need like a waist belt on it. Oh okay. yeah. Multifunctional. So yeah, yeah, as you can tell, Judy is of course style queen <laughs> the farm, and she styles all of us on the horses. Um, and her number one style item is of course the the Cumbrian farm socks. Yes, yes. In a in a, in a array of different colours. Yes, I can't live without them. No, especially not in these cold winter months. Otherwise, our toes will literally fall off. Yeah, I hate having cold feet. Yeah. I can't deal. Yeah, I'm very much a person where I, I have to have things that function or else I can't deal with it. Yeah, I get very frustrated. Yeah, she has a lot of pens on my girl. I the carbs from like exterior. There's very like, like. Yeah, I'm sure someone actually said once I was like a swan. Yeah. Like, I can't think of the words out. But it's like on the outside, I look really calm. But underneath the water, it's like. <sighs> There's like a swan that's drowning. Yeah, literally, that's what someone described me as, and I'm like, actually, that's perfect. Yeah. Because deep down inside, a lot of the time, my brain is just. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that's a lot of us here in many ways, because I think everyone is sort of phrase episode where Rogan yeah. and another word we learned from Diane, the neurodivergence was shared. We've all had our own fair and share of mental health issues <laughs> over the years. <laughs> um, all of us. And yeah, we've all just found different ways and means of dealing with those. But anyway, oh, oh yes, a, a comment about the lighting as well. I noticed someone commented on the previous video, so the red was a bit much. Yeah, we've tried to kind of fix that um, a little bit, making it a bit brighter, you know, just like just like our souls are on the inside. Um, because, but the only reason we have infrared is because it's nice and warm and infrared has health benefits. So we're helping our hair growth, helping our hair growth. Um, but yeah, how you've been coming here since you were my age now, roughly. Well, more like Crow's age, because you're um, 17 -ish. Yeah, 17, I think. Yeah. I think I turned 18 the year. I don't know what I did. I just remember getting my 18th birthday card. It, I must have been here a year because I got the 18th birthday card that Tracy one made for me. You know one of those that has all the pictures on? Oh yeah. I remember one of them was because we did that Frisian, uh, well, and I included Jack, my fellow who lived here at the time. We did that gym kind of thing. Oh my god, yes. And that was so cool. And that was like, I think, the first full year that I was here. So I think that was like 2014. So Whoa. yeah, I've been here since I was 17. I'm doing that Saturday 2013. And now you are 20. 28. So that's 11 years. Yeah. That's insane. Mm. It's pretty mad. Yeah. yeah, it's like time's just flown by and I wouldn't expect yeah. to have been doing this. <laughs> no. no, it's just crazy, isn't it? Oh, time flies. It is, and I think it's crazy as well how, like, it's kind of mysterious how the universe works bringing people to the right place, because the only reason you found out about this place is because wasn't there an ad in the local kind of corner shop where Tracy had advertised for someone to 
Yeah, because um, I was, that was it, I'd left school, I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. I'd always loved animals and farming, and my, my grandpa's farm was like the best place in the world, that's where I'd go at the weekends. I guess a bit like this place was to you, like as a child. Yeah. But I was still lost, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I'd always loved horses, but never had any way of getting involved with them because one thing or another, like most people, you can't afford to have your own horse, can't afford to go for lessons, but I used to just love horses. Um, so I left school, didn't know what to do, went to six farm, lasted a few months, left because I hated it. Um, and I just looked around anywhere for a job, and I got a apprenticeship on a dairy farm. Was there for two years and then I wanted to come back home and I was literally just so lost. I didn't know what I was doing. And I don't remember why I was in the shop. Like I don't usually go in there that often. I just went in and saw this little ad. It was just like a handwritten ad. And it just said something like wanted like groom or something like that for a Frisian horse yard. I was like, Frisian horses, like where are the Frisian horses? So I think I like emailed Tracy or something and just I had like backwards and forwards and it was like, oh just come up and see us. And so I was like, okay, obviously I was a bit nervous because I was always quite a nervous person, I still am at times. But I remember coming up to the yard and the it was like absolutely tipping down with rain, like it was horrendous. And I walked into the barn and like drawing in like that first table and I was just like, oh my god. And like that was just the moment I was like, whoa, mm. <laughs> this is Amazing, and just everybody, like even that first day, I think it was like, I think like everyone was here, it was like a weekend, and it was like, oh my god, this place is just, I just felt instantly like at home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when you first started here, uh, we've had, we would have had Drummy here at Hoytse, who were stallions at the time, we would have had Femme, was Fel born then? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm sure the only one that has been born since I was here was Xiao. Yes. I think Xiao was maybe born like the following, I don't know what it but me in the beginning. Yes, the because Fema had Vela, and then post Vela there was Ishka and Inika, so Inika and mm. Ishka, Fema, Ramid, and then Inika was the other transfer baby, so they were kind of at the same time. And then Renska had a son called Hennis. Um, he was one of the only, only horses we ever sold back when we used to do that. And even though we don't have him here anymore, he does have the most beautiful home where he's loved and he will be for the rest of his days. So there was those three. And then after those three, a few years later, Femme had Yolanda. And then after Yolanda, Femme had Zhao Kyo, which must mm. have been... Because yeah. Zhao is 10 or 11 now. So, yeah, so that fits at the time. Yeah, it's been like in the yeah. 13. So by then, I'm just working out, we would have had the three, when you started, we would have had the three boys, Femme, Bella, Brenska, Nika, Yodel. Uh, there was, I'm sure there was Berba. Oh my Dibrick god. as well. I'd forgotten about those two. Because I think Dibrick was the first one I sat on oh. in the arena. And then I'm sure I wrote Berber a few times, like, I remember like the half or out with Tracy Greenbank. Mm. And it was like, whoa this is so different because i i haven't had like a huge amount of horse experience when i came here like i used to just help someone with fell pony and never really talk properly and i said that straight away obviously that wasn't at the beginning sort of what the job was about it was more just being here and working on the yard and because i worked on farms it was kind of like right well i can just get on work and do it and then when the opportunity came up that tracy sort of approached me and said oh would you like to you know perhaps like try like have a sit on or and i thought oh my god like really <laughs> like i can't do that um and yeah it just kind of went from there and even like from the beginning like just handling the horses was like oh my god they're amazing and i always remember height so was in like that stable that isn't a stable anymore and even like walking in from there to the tires was like whoa yeah <laughs> like it's just the little things that just meant so much and it was just gradually over time my confidence built a little bit because I used to be very much warm. See, I'm Dago Junior, but I used to be really like in myself, and I'd just literally come here, I'd put my head down, just do my job, and go home. And it was like that was just because that's what I'd always sort of known through a job. But being here, it, it wasn't like a normal job. It was no. like you were becoming part of something bigger and part of a family. So it was just great to, yeah be able to have those opportunities to 
to get to know all these horses and then to actually ride one was like, yeah, I've never ever, ever expected that. And even like going out on the drives and like harnessing up, and it was just like, wow, I never thought I'd ever have been doing this. No, no, and I think um, that is the thing about this place working here, you literally just grow and evolve with it. Mm -hmm. Like it's not. It's not like a natural progression where I don't know, it's like, right, you've been here for two years now, here's your certificate, you come up to the next level. Yeah, exactly. Like, you are now allowed to stroke them. Um, <laughs> like, well done. Um, you know, first of all, you're only allowed to lead them around. No touching. Okay, yeah, exactly. Two, you're, you're allowed to touch them. Uh, no, it's, it's literally just as you kind of go along. And going back to Berber and the brick, we used to have, yeah, we used to have a few that just kind of, because Tracy had a contact over in Holland, they don't work together anymore, but they kind of co-owned some horses and and I think Tracy'd have some over here for a period of time and send them back and, and it's all part of this place's history which hopefully we'll divulge into because once over we did sell a couple here and there, not many. Um we haven't done for years now and we never would again because every horse here is now part of the family. And what's really beautiful is every horse that has ever been sold from here has always ended up with an absolutely beautiful one-to-one -one home where they are loved. Um, but yeah, there was Beba, there was the brick, because um, Beba was quite, um, she was kind of fiery, wasn't she? Yeah, um, yeah, she was, she was an interesting character. I remember her at the title point, she ended up like, did she used to like, just go back and then like, kind of try and, she used to like, do you know, she almost fell asleep. At the time, yeah. was, she did something a bit funky, I can't remember. And it, well, there wasn't a lot of times where her thing would be to go up and yeah. go backwards. I don't I don't remember because I was in a little at the time, but I do remember she was um, unusual. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think, like, I don't know, I guess coming here, you never probably expected to be doing what you are now, but alongside doing what you do here, do you think that everything you kind of learnt here and grown confidence transpired and transferred to other aspects of your life as well? Yeah, definitely. Because um, again, like I said before, well, I guess before and sort of at the beginning of being here, I never had too much confidence in myself. I never kind of knew what I wanted to do. And I guess I kind of came here as like a lost person. Like I knew what I loved in life and I knew what I wanted to do, but it was just, I didn't quite know how to get there. Yeah. And it was like starting here um, made me feel part of something. Um, and then it, it just kind of led on to other things. So I think, yeah, I started in 2013 and I'd always loved horses. And I then I think by being here, I then got the confidence to go and like ride for other people again. Um, so I did that, and then that kind of pushed me then to want to get my own, which I did. Um, I got my fellow pony, Jack. And yeah, it just all went from there. It's like it just kind of enabled me to like build my confidence because I knew I had support around me to do more. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like this place has just made me evolve and yeah, it's just like a journey. It's crazy, isn't it? How some people, you know, they say they want to do something as a job, but I never saw this as just a job. No. Like it's so much more than that. No, and I think that's the fascinating thing here is we as the team, we've all effectively been like homegrown, home produced. Yeah. <laughs> we are all homebreds ourselves. Yeah. Because um, we've all effectively grown up here. I mean, you've been here since you were a teenager. Freya mm -hmm. and I have been here since we were, since we were significantly smaller. And, and yeah, we've grown with all the horses as well, because now you work with, with Nika, Ice and Mabel, and mm -hmm. Ice and Mabel have been more recent, but Nika, she was born with bread here, and when you started, she can't... She can't have been any older than five, I don't think. No. No. Because I think I always had, like, a bit of a... Like, I was always drawn to her. Yeah. Um, but she was obviously quite a complex character. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and yeah, just kind of evolved that over the years I spent more time with her and then she had her operation and she got her stifle. Yeah. And then it was sort of after that that it was really like, right, okay, Nika can be your sort of 
I wouldn't say projects, I don't really like that word, but like my, yeah, fix my, my adopted child. Yeah. <laughs> she became sort of my, yeah, I guess project as such, because that gave me confidence to think, okay, right, I'm being sort of trusted to like work with a horse, like one to one. Yeah. Which again, I've never had any official training or anything like that, but it's just that evolving learning through like Tracy and Mel and everybody here. Yeah. That we all just work together and it's a case of that's what is so great about the dynamic here is that Tracy does allow us to kind of mm. take our own path and learning journeys, but she's always there to help us if we need it. So I just love that because yeah. you feel like yeah, it almost makes you feel really um yeah, like respected in a way. Whereas yes. a lot of jobs that I've had previous they were purely just jobs, but like working on a farm with animals, it's very much just right. I need you to do this and do that, do this. But it's just different. It's not. It's not the same. And I think that's so great for all that we have that. Mm. So we we're allowed to be ourselves and and go through the ups and downs of working with the horses. And I think that's what yeah. kind of makes it just so, such a great place to be for everybody. Oh yeah, I think another big thing like, is Tracy giving us that freedom. It's also being allowed to make our own mistakes mm-hmm. and not having to, even though I guess as individuals, most of us here are the type that would beat ourselves up about things, but not because, like I guess, I don't know, in other jobs, it's like if you made a mistake, especially with an animal, you then have to go back to your, to your boss and come and be like, Really sorry, this happened today! And you might have to worry about any repercussions, whereas here, I think it's Tracy, she's made all the mistakes herself in the past. She's happy to let us make those mistakes and then correct them, and also she'll be on hand to correct them if necessary, but it's not like we we have to worry about no. I don't know, getting everything perfect. Yeah, I think yeah. that's where, I me mean, as a person, I was always somebody that was so worried about doing the wrong thing or upsetting anybody and I think that's where in the early days I was very like in myself because I thought I don't want any responsibility because I don't want to do anything wrong and I think that spans just I mean I've basically been like that my whole life and I used to just run on adrenaline all the time because I was so worried about what other people thought um, and I never wanted to disappoint anyone or let anyone down but that's where I think with the dynamic of this place that is what has helped me and, and everybody because it makes you feel like you're a valued human yeah. rather than just somebody to do a job mm. because that again is my a big insecurity of mine is that I've always thought well people only want me if I'm useful and like that's how I've always felt not just being here like that I've basically felt like my whole life but it's yeah it's amazing yeah. and it's really helped me with my whole mental health journey as such that yeah you feel genuinely content and you mm. feel you, know, you don't just feel like you're there for a purpose no mm. no and i think that's the thing having a dynamic like here you you do feel having so, a boss or someone that you work for that respects you and values you definitely helps you learn to trust yourself because if you have a boss that's always kind of micromanaging you and doing this and doing that all it makes me feel is, oh my god, I can't get this wrong or I can't be trusted because they don't trust me and, and it's yeah. a vicious circle and I think that then transpires onto the horses because you've got a boss that doesn't trust the person that's training their horses and then because the person that's training the horses doesn't feel trusted to do their job, they don't trust themselves when they're working with the horse and then yeah. the horse picks up on that, yeah. whereas here it's all just, it's, yeah, it's all just happy, relaxed, you know, yes, occasionally um stuff does hit the fan <laughs> um yeah. but yeah we, we always find our way through there have been there have been quite a few dramas here over the years um yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know i know with you as well you back in the days when i was riding because you would well and obviously seen this place like evolve and change and mm. and i never at the time when there was lots of hacking and beach rides, I was never really old enough or involved enough to take out those rides because I was at I was school, but you were responsible for taking those of people out on hacks and mm-hmm. to the beach. Yeah, and and, yeah, that, I think in a way that was like a huge part of my sort of 
evolution, I suppose that sounds really weird, but like if I'd never been pushed to do, not pushed, no one pushed me to do it, it just kind of evolved that that became my thing, mm. that I, you know, it got me speaking to people because at the very beginning I didn't really want to speak to anyone, I was really introverted and it was just, I'm sure Tracy did it in such a really nice way that I started going out on hacks with her and mm. people and I sort of got more involved with the visitors that came because mostly at that time there were people coming and doing experiences but it was mostly hacking and driving um, and the weddings and everything as well um, so it was just sort of like integrating me really slowly because I was a person that at that point would have felt really overwhelmed but it really did me the world of good and I think all those people I took out like they were all great and I think if any of you watching are the people that like we went out hacking, I would love it if you like just talked about even like a memory you have because all you know it's, there were so many and there are times that I, I look through pictures and I think oh I love that hat with that person and we had such a nice chat and it's like you, a lot of a lot of the people that I took out you become like lifelong friends because in that one hour mm -hmm. to three hour ride you could basically talk about anything yeah. and I felt that that's really what helped me gain my confidence that you know obviously on the side of riding the horse as well I'd get on all different horses because basically whoever came we'd try and fit them to the horse that suited them properly and who they connected with so then I'd basically ride whoever you know whoever else was going out on the hack so for me as well, it, it just gave me that confidence to think, right, I can get on any of the horses and connect with them and try and ride them correctly. But obviously, again, it's like you're doing two jobs in one. You're almost trying to ride properly and trying to connect with the horse, but then you're obviously trying to connect with a person. And to me, it felt effortless because everybody that came here are usually just on exactly the same wavelength as us. Mm. And I just think it was so amazing to do that and I feel so privileged that I had that time to do that and even though there were times I was doing the beach rides where I'd take people on my own and I was thinking, oh my god, this is so much responsibility. Mm. But I think I would never have done it otherwise no. because I'm the sort of person where sometimes I need to just be thrown into something like, oh yeah, uh, so we're doing that this day and I'm like, oh, okay. But once I'm doing it, I love it. It's just the thought of doing certain things that used to really worry me. Yeah. Um, but I just think I'm so grateful for all that time. And even now with clients, you know, it's not, we don't necessarily do the same thing now, but it is just that connecting with people and that helps you as a person. And it's just, yeah, building yeah. that connection with them on the horses. So. Well, it's like the other experiences, I think now, are probably the closest thing to that that kind of thing where you're just on the yard with us, you can have a chat and you'll just be there getting horses out and then it is mm. <laughs> out the field with visitors or, or grooming the horses alongside the visitors and that's where like in that time I think it's almost like coming here because you're physically doing something with the horses and and I think this is people we don't we don't like expect you to be anything or judge you in any mm. way we like to just try and make people feel at, 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 at ease as possible and I think the art experiences now is probably kind of the equivalent to to the conversations you'd have out on hacks. People just come up to the yard, they get stuck in with one of the horses and they just start chatting away, telling us their yeah. life story. Because that's um, the, you always have common ground because mm -hmm. you're obviously both here because you love horses and yeah. fishing specifically. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just great to share that with people and you just feel that instant connection with someone and it's yeah it's just the best feeling in the world really that you're just all enjoying this moment with these horses mm. yeah and sometimes as well i noticed that perhaps some people that came were were quite introverted as well you know they're quite nervous a little bit yes you know they're not sure and they don't know how we're gonna I suppose, like anybody, you go to a new place, you always think, oh, will they like me, or will we get on? And I think some people, as soon as you come onto the yard, they feel at ease, but at yes. first it maybe takes a little bit of time to open them up, and then they finally realise, oh, I can just be myself. Mm -hmm. Because I guess I know that feeling, because when I first came here, I 
did feel a little bit intimidated. Oh my god, like these horses are amazing, and you know I don't I don't know anything about any of this, and you do just get yourself a little bit worked up. But mm. you can relate that to people who think actually once they arrive, they know exactly what it's about. They know we're all really genuine. We're not here to judge anybody. We're not here to you know be like some yards can be a little bit intimidating. But we don't really give off that impression because we're all mm. like people from totally different backgrounds, but we've all come together to just make this place work. Yeah. And yeah, it's just great to share that with all people. Oh, it is, it's by far one of the best aspects of the job. And you know, going back to people coming here and feeling at ease, I think that's such an important point you've just mm. raised is that Anyone that wants to visit here, I think there's quite a big misconception that if you want to come to a yard or do like an equestrian or horse related experiences that you have to have prior equine knowledge, you know, you could have never touched a horse before, you could like not even know, I don't know, the left feet are called hooves and you could turn up here and it's, it's irrelevant how much you do or don't know or whether you've seen a horse before. All you need to be is someone that genuinely loves animals and wants to give the horses as much attention as possible. Or saying that you don't even have to want to, you know, I know everyone has different confidence levels around animals and, and it'd be really lovely if you're someone who isn't confident around them and you build yourself up enough to be able to interact. But even if you don't want to necessarily interact with them, you just want to come and be here and see them and watch them. And even if you don't want to speak to any of us because you hate people, fine you know you can be anyone from anywhere and you are more than welcome here with our horses it background doesn't matter you know you could turn up here looking like um a freshly divorced middle-aged man and and we wouldn't care what questions we get you could just come and make yourself at home so any freshly divorced middle-aged man or woman come and come and join us you know um <coughs> But, but yeah, I just have another thing in my head that I was going to say, but it, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone with the wind, been eaten by a tiger. Um, so yeah, that was your experiences, having people here. Um, yeah, I don't know. What in your words has it been like seeing this place change? Over, I don't know, like... Um... Um... <laughs> um I just think it's great how it has evolved mm. to suit the horse's needs, but also the people's needs. Yeah, because we're all a bit special needs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We yeah. all have special needs <laughs> in one way or another. We all just kind of fit together in this like adopted family mm. of horses and people, and people that visit here are also like our little family as well. Yeah. So yeah, I just feel like it's just all evolved in the right way, mm. at the right pace, I suppose, because I guess like anything, it takes time for things to change. And I'm a great believer in that a lot of things happen for the right reasons. Yeah. And it's like there's ups and downs involved with certain things, but it, it usually all works out in the end. Yeah. Um, and we all kind of ride the highs and lows together. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, it's, yeah, that's the great thing about it, that mm. the highs and lows with us and the highs and lows of the horses, it's it all just balances yeah. out and yeah, I just think it's great what how this place is evolving and it's just exciting Definitely. to see what like the future holds I suppose. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and I think as well, you know, going back to people kind of been brought here, it's been fascinating how our little I don't know, cho chosen family of people has grown like we've got We've got so many amazing, amazing friends that we've all, we, that we've both, and we've all met by mm -hmm. doing this that we've never met otherwise. Because ironically, these people, they've lived very different lives and backgrounds to us, but this place has created the common ground for that connection. And we've got like a little network of people like that, that started out as visitors and are now very good friends. And that's, mm -hmm. again. Yeah, it's just such a nice feeling that you almost get to meet people from all around the world, mm. around the country, from like totally different backgrounds that like day to day, I would never have bumped into them because I'm very much a person that I'm, I like home comforts and I like what I know. So I don't really put myself out there that much. So it's great to 
just, yeah, be able to think, oh my God, I never knew I'd be so close to somebody that's from a totally different background and it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are or what you do, it's just some people you just genuinely just gel with straight away. Yeah, you use some women, yeah, like, you're, you're my friend now. Yeah, literally, yeah. we just stop. Well, I'm very much that sort of person, like, you're my friend now. Yeah. <laughs> not in a creepy way, but it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not it's just certain people I think, oh my god, I really like you. Yeah, yeah it's like so cool. And, and, it, and, it, and that's just reminded me as well of work always. Mm. Um, yeah, we've had so many cool work ways here. <laughs> so what she's doing. <laughs> the years. Excuse me. Oh, okay, just a bit on The idea of some of the workaways is that they'd help us do things on the yard, like look out for hay next to the turnouts, and we're always really, really grateful for that. Mm-hmm. But some people, because they were in here for a short period, they perhaps didn't really care about what they were doing. So it's like you'd walk past something, they'd just do it, and you'd kind of look at it and go, oh. Yeah, it's really yeah. hard. It's like, and then you just have to try and like secretly do it without oh, no. knowing. But when actually, what we should have done is just gone. Oh, no, no, I just can't no, do no, that. We're not very good I'm at looking after people. Like, yeah. I'm not good at. I'm not a leader. Like, I can't do that. Like, I always remember actually. I think they have some. Um, they weren't work ways. They were like work experience. They were quite young, mm. and like I basically ended up doing everything for them. <laughs> But that's just the person I am, like, I can't, I feel so bad, because, like, I probably allowed them to not do anything, but, like, I just, I don't know, I'm just not good at, I know what you mean, though, but you know, it's like, can you please do this, please, if you really, really want my thank you, thank you so much. And it's like, I was trying to say it in a nice way, like, even if, like, they're mucking out and they haven't really done it properly, I I don't know, I'd always try and say, oh, maybe, like, We'll just like maybe do that again, or yeah. but like if they weren't there, I just sneak and do it and then <laughs> pretend that it didn't happen. And like it's fine, it didn't happen. But yeah. that's just what I'm like as a person. I just can't. I can't like I because I'm so worried about upsetting people anyway. I hate them to think, oh my god, you're such a. Am I allowed to say bitch? Yeah. It's technically not so because Nell's a bitch. Yeah, yeah. She's not she's, a bitch. But she's, she's a bitch. bitch. She's a boss. Yeah, she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I just, I would hate for people to think, oh my gosh, she's so, like, horrible. Yeah. Because I generally don't want to upset anyone, but sometimes yeah. I probably need to learn to be like, maybe just, maybe yeah. do that again, or... Yeah, so it's, you know, challenge the next stage of Julie's personal growth. Can you please start requesting our volunteers that come in and help us out to do really terrible jobs? Oh my god, imagine, like, you set it up, like, yeah. like you two in there. Terrible job. Yeah. Um, and then, and then Tracy and I'll just have to ignore it, and then to the point where it gets where you can't take it anymore. <laughs> and I'll just around the app, like, oh my gosh! Yeah. I'm just gonna pick myself, you can't, I can't believe what to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. It is. <laughs> Sometimes it would be so much easier to not care what other people thought, but, but then again, that's, it's not. It's not a good personality trait, so... No, it's getting the balance, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, you know, going back to volunteers and workaways, I think even work ways we have in the future, we perhaps wouldn't, unless someone had a quite experience and they were the right kind of personality to be conscientious about what they do, we perhaps wouldn't have people get involved in the horses again, because I think in the past when we have done, you know, going back to people not doing things properly, it just gets to the point where it's like, well, it's just, because the idea is that them doing, helping us out, frees up our time to look after the horses more and give them more one-to-one time, then it just gets to the point where it's like, well, we might as well just do it all ourselves anyway, which is why we've always just kept it just to us as the team here and some of our, our volunteers. Not that I really like to refer to them as volunteers. Yeah, I don't really know what to call um, them. I but, just call them like the adopted family. Yeah, the adopted, and the chosen ones. Because, yeah. yeah, I guess and a lot of them are always a bit like conscious of, mm. I don't want to be in the way. But it's like, I always try to be like, you are not in the way. Like, no. Even if you are here and just, chat to us or yeah. help like groom a horse or fill a hay net or lead a horse up and down the road and like to them that's like amazing because yeah. they don't get to do that every day like we do and I always try and think right if that was me it would be an amazing like opportunity to be able to groom that horse yeah. or you know, it's going back to those early days isn't it where you you just really appreciate that oh, I think the time as well that is something we've both had to learn is when we had volunteers in the beginning or Chosen friends or whatever we're called. <laughs> the chosen ones. The chosen ones. <laughs> you yeah. know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, not that we like favour people um, or anything, but but 
Um, the chosen ones could have negative connotations as well. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> you don't know what goes on here behind closed doors. Yeah. Um, is that we've like with volunteers helping. I remember I was just feel really bad things. And like they'd ask, oh, you know what can I do to help? And it'd be like, well, there's a turnout that really needs poo picking, but I don't want to have to ask you to pick up pieces. Yeah. And I'm so I'm one of those people. Where I'm like, I'm just gonna help you do it because yeah. I don't want them to feel like I'm just like giving them all the rubbish jobs. No. But then I think what I'm learning now is that actually, A, we don't mind doing those jobs ourselves. No. Um, B, like, people actually quite enjoy it because it's mm. like, Kaz is a prime example of this. She loves going in the hay hole and filling hay nets. Mm. Yeah? And that's her like, favourite thing to do. She's like, yeah, I've got hay nets, I'll look at the view. And it's like, that, that's not really yeah, good. Yeah, because I always try to do it where when we know Kaz is coming, I always leave the hay nets. So yeah. like, then she has her hay nets to do because I know she really enjoys that. Yeah. So and it's. Yeah. And it's learning that people actually they don't mind doing those sort of jobs. Yeah, because um, in all fairness, like I still I, you know, some people hate doing like the hangouts and the chairs, but I quite enjoy it because so, I just I'm very much a person that loves like that route. Not yeah, like the routine or like the or oh, cheese up. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, I've actually done something. Because that's just who I am as a person. I enjoy yeah. achieving things, even if they're very small things. Yeah. Get yourself a star chart. Then like oh you, my can, God, yeah. you can just give yourself a little gold star to like bother me. Oh. Yeah, I need that sometimes, I think. Because yeah. sometimes you get through the day and you kind of think, I don't do anything like the movie's just a mess. It's like no. You have to think about it. You have yeah. to do something. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it's taking a bit of a U turn now, like thank <laughs> you know. Look <laughs> um, around <laughs> like, Steering away from people, we've obviously mentioned that you work with Mika and now you have Isocall and Mabel. And, like, I don't know, how's the journey going with them? Like, um, um Mabel, yeah, so Mabel, oh god, I, I think I started working with her like a couple of years ago, something like that. Um, I don't know how that came about either. We she just, she just kind of. We were drawn together. Yeah, yeah, it's like that's how it works here. It's like mysterious energies that pull the right person to the right cause. Yeah, just that's it. We're just that's it. We're together for life now. It's Um, not, there's not a process. It's never really, it's never even actually said. No. It just just happens. Yeah, it's weird. So we're just drawn together and then it's almost like it's just confirmed because we all just. Yeah. I don't know if Tracy said to you one day. I don't remember, but I think it was basically. After we stopped doing as many hacks, and Mabel was used quite a lot for the hacks because she was just cool and babe. Um, but she used to do everything in it. Well, she still does. She does things in her own way. But she basically, like, say if we did beach rides, she'd just like find them on the beach, going sideways. Or if we're doing hacks, she'd kind of like go around like a banana and like this. And like, it just got to a point where it just wasn't good for her. And I think she needed like some one to one to try and help her work in a normal way. Um, but then we tried that, and so we did a bit of schooling. I know Tracy obviously did schooling with her throughout her, you know, hacking years, I suppose. And, and she was, yeah, she was driving as well then, wasn't she? But she started yeah. hacking and driving. And then we tried to do more schooling, but it just didn't suit her. She, she does not do well going in circles. No. Um, so she did that, but I think just came to the conclusion that Mabel just wasn't. She's not designed to be. Really. She's not. No, her com- her, just her confirmation, yeah. and everything. She's just so much better suited to driving. So I think we just made that decision. I think mm-hmm. it was shortly before one of the Frisian thons. Yeah. Because I did get on her for like the last time sort of thing, mm-hmm. and just took her down Great Bank. And that was sort of the, the moment where that was that decision was made that actually, she just isn't serious being risen. Because when you were on her, she'd have like a little dippy back and you'd be sort of being tipped one way, and she'd be tipping the other way, and her neck would be like this, and her legs would be like everywhere. And yeah, she just yeah. wasn't she just wasn't enjoying it anymore. No. Um, even though she did love like going to the beach and doing all of this stuff. But yeah, that was just a decision that we made. And then from then it was basically a case of doing laundry with her, like pole work and just getting her to try and be a bit straighter with what she does. And that was really drives the thing called the tummy. Yeah, it's like rather use the tummy muscles rather than just gaining more weight on belly. Yeah. Um, but we love her belly and uh, to be fair, even in the peak of her physical fitness, she still had the belly. 
Yeah, yeah, she could be one of the first ones here, and she would like the rest of her would be terrible, but it'd still be like, oh, yeah. And she's like, she just built like a tank, like yeah. And she's just like, like, she's just like, yeah, she's just so cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then we've just kind of been on that journey yeah. of fitness work on the lunge and then driving. Did loads of driving. I think it was early this year, or the year before that. Yeah. And that's when I really got into it because I'd always Tracy obviously showed me how to drive. I'd driven a few of the others occasionally, but never got really into it because I was always quite an anxious person. And driving is very scary because you have to think about the horse and the drivers and like what's going on and where. To go and like avoiding potholes and like all these things and I used to even find being a groom quite stressful because I'd be like oh my god like what if something goes wrong and yeah but you can't think like that and that I think being sort of driven to do more of the driving helped me just go it's fine because when you're driving you have a groom so they're there to deal with the cars and the people and all you need to think about is the horse driving them properly and turning corners and just focusing on your job. So I think for me that was great. I absolutely loved getting to do my driving with her. She's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a little icicle who is like yeah. a little athlete. Yeah. And well, like still running. Yeah. Because <laughs> sometimes my storage space, yes, we're still rolling, gets like too full. Um, so yeah, the, the athlete with the dark bar yeah. and the slightly defiant teenage energy. Yeah, so um, I think when we started with him, we did more like lunch work and he could, it was very apparent that he was a lot weaker on his right hand. So it was just, that was all like the basic beginning, just kind of get our strength there and get him to actually use his body properly because he's very much a horse where he just put, like he'd have all this tension like in his neck and shoulders and he'd just like drag himself along in front and there was no softness, there was no suppleness, it was just all, oh my god, I need to do everything really fast because that's all I know. Um, so we just had to, we've just been working through that and just trying to teach him that you can relax down, you can be soft. Um, so that was just the case of doing like the lunging and then actually getting on him. And I remember one of the first times I got on him in the arena and I was asking him just to soften in his mouth. Oh, I remember and all he did was like, he was like, what do you want me to do? I don't know. And because he literally couldn't soften his neck, he just went up and was like, oh. And it was like, that was because he just didn't know what what I was asking him, which was completely fair enough, because he's not the sort of that would do anything like that out of malice, because he's just not like that. And then from there, it was just a case of trying to explain it slowly and just getting to understand that all I want you to do is be nice and soft and relax. And, you know, we, we've just been going through that journey of, you know, Jenny, the physio, been come in and it's been great that each time she comes, she sees changes and improvements. And so we've just been on a journey of doing that and doing like schooling and hacking. And, and I always find with a lot of them, I love to give them like variety um, because you think you know yourself. If you get to go out hacking, it's like change of scenery, but it's also really good for them going up and down the hills, and you can do a little bit of school when you're out, and obviously doing the school work in the arena on circles and getting to ask them to be flexible and supple, and yeah, and then obviously the groundwork is great because you can then try and relate that to what you feel when you're on them. So I just think, yeah, for us, we're just still on that journey of that fitness work and suppleness and. It will take as long as it takes, you know, we're not in any rush, we're not doing it for any particular reason, you know, we're not going to go out and compete or anything like that, it is just literally so he can work effectively and build his muscle tone and be nice and supple and be as comfortable and, yeah, just fit and healthy, mm. really, and he's definitely a horse that wants to be working, he loves work. He just wants to be doing something because he's like a bored child otherwise. Mm. He just gets really naughty and he's in the field and he's like, me, 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 I'm bored, come on, pick me. So he just needs something to be going on, otherwise he just gets like a rude teenager. Yeah, some of them definitely need more mental stimulation than others. Mm. Like, the likes of the youths, he's very happy as long as he gets attention, whereas the, 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 uh, there's others that have quite busy little brains and they need to physically be doing, otherwise they just, they just, they just basically go on little rampages. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, yeah. You it's just so enough, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then there was, of course, Ninky Nong, who, he, she's the OG, really, the original yeah, girl. Yeah, she, the original girl. she has definitely shaped me mm. in ways that other horses haven't as so, And not that they haven't, it's just that she was, like, the star of it all. You yeah, the first one's always special. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and she... I guess because at that point, she was, like, my first, like, child of my own as such here. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, she... She taught me the whole thing of being calm and not panicking about what they're doing and just being like, right, we're just doing this now. And to me, that was great because as a person, I can be quite anxious anyway. But if you then have a horse that you're working with that is really anxious, you have to then go, mm. I'm calm, so you're calm. And then you sort of feed off each other. And yeah, we went through various journeys of caught, I think we did like more hacking. And there was a year when we did a lot of schooling. And then we did actually, yeah, we were going to Mel's and we were doing a lot and we were building up because that was obviously after her op. So we wanted her to be able to work in the right way so she didn't injure herself. And, you know, it's, that's what it was all about, really just keeping her comfortable and happy. And then we did go and do one dressage competition. It wasn't a competition, we went on competitively. It was really just to go and see that all our hard work had had sort of acute, I can't even the word now, but like it had all come together. Yeah, exactly, like it had all fit together and we thought, oh my god, we can do this together, mm. and we did, and she was great, she enjoyed it. Especially for a horse like Nika, who mm. in her younger years would have A, found travelling stressful. If I remember rightly, she used to have to travel with travel bandages underneath travel boots. Yeah. I don't know where that memory's come from. Um, and A, getting to somewhere else very stressful, and to now, a couple of years ago, or whenever it was, be able to go out with you and do a test in a very relaxed manner. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what it was all about. It was just about her going, relaxing in a new environment, because obviously, previous to that, she'd only be, you know, she'd be going to Mel's every few weeks, and we'd be going out hacking, doing stuff in school, but she's very much a horse of, she likes to know what she's doing, she doesn't like change. So I think that's where it was a great step for us to think, mm. okay, she still listens to me, she still trusts me, even when she feels so out of her depth. And I think for me as well, it's good for us just to like work together as a team. I think, yeah. okay, we've got this now. Um, and then yeah, after that, we, we carried on with the schooling and the hacking, but yeah, it's now just got to a point with her where schooling just isn't great for her joints and it's better for her just to go out hacking, do some work on the lunch, just again to keep her supple and happy, but it's just, that's how it evolves with the horses, that if it gets to a point where one thing isn't working for them anymore, we then just change that, and as long as she's happy and healthy and comfortable, that's all that matters, and mm. we can enjoy her time together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, going back to the first one always being special, I think the reason why they are is because, arguably in many ways, the first one you have is always potentially the worst off because you know the least, so you make the most mistakes with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know I've had that with Xiao, and it's the same regardless of who you are. Your first one, you're always going to mess up the most with. And then there's sometimes, I don't know if you find it a guilt as well when you start with another one, and it's yeah. like, oh, I messed the first one around so much, like, oopsie. Not that they yeah. care as long as you rectify it, but they've had to go through so much more confusion because you were confused yourself. And yeah. as a result of that, with every next horse you work with, there's always a little piece of them and it's like you can transfer what you learned with Nika to ice. So mm. with Mabel, if she gets a bit stressed, not that she does anymore out on the drive, you can go, okay, Nika taught me how to, yeah. to keep a horse calm and it's always that. The first one is the first one's always special. Yeah. Because I always remember Mabel did used to be quite stressy out in traffic. Yeah. She used to go, Ooh! Yeah, she she used to just get herself a little bit wound up, but mm. I guess it's that when you know them so well, you can react before that happens. And you think, yeah. oh, she's a bit stressed, I'll just talk to her. And it's just it's just giving them that reassurance they need before it escalates. And I guess that comes back to being human and you know how it feels yourself. Mm. That sometimes things can seem a lot worse, but then once you have a bit of reassurance, or you think more rationally, or give yourself time to just think rationally, you think actually it's not that bad. Yeah, but everything, everything's okay. Yeah. But yeah, I think 
I think we've covered most things to be honest. I mean, mm-hmm. we could cover loads more, but then we'd literally be here for like until mm-hmm. tomorrow. I don't know. Um, what have we... But I think I think it's nice though doing these because we can kind of start out with the base of sort of <coughs> the history of ourselves and our the horses. And in the future, we can go more in depth into the history because so much has happened here, but mm-hmm. we don't necessarily always remember ourselves. No, yeah. it's, not really. it's just a journey, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they're like, very tiny. They are, but they've had a nice time in here today under the infrared. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be supercharged, ready to go again. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me in, in the chairs in the Friendship Barn. And there is only, I just need to mentally count in my head, this will be coming out on the 19th, which is tomorrow, so there will only be. Maybe it's the other time. I have no idea. Okay, there will only be six. Five, four sleeps to go till Christmas. So select a number of choice um, within that because we don't know what day it is, let alone what day it is, let alone how many days it is till Christmas. Like, chances are we'll both wake up separately on Christmas morning and not even recognise that it's Christmas. No. So, it's just yeah. another day. Just another day in paradise. Yeah, in paradise. Not, not in a depressive way. It is great. <laughs> so, not like, it's just another day. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, I guess when you live this life with all these animals, and that is what your life is, mm. it, it just evolves around them. It and it's great. It is great. So yeah, thank you. And guess what? There is in five, four, three, two, one. Sleeps until Christmas. <laughs> Yay! Cool. Oh, I